clouds. Make a new project, 4.26 or newer. Blank template. Before adding clouds, we need to do some setup. Set your lights to movable, and in the skylights details under light, check enable real-time capture. This makes the skylight change intensity and color based on the sky atmosphere. Now delete the skybox, the reflection capture, and the atmospheric fog. Save the map. Drag in a sky atmosphere component. Make sure your directional light has atmosphere sunlight checked, otherwise the sky won't know where the sun should go. It's so pretty. I except for that abyss down below. Drag in an exponential height fog. Much better. Except the sun should kind of light it up. Uh, go into your project settings and search for support sky atmosphere affecting height fog. This is what it does. Enable it. Restart the editor. If this is your first time doing that, then you'll probably have to compile shaders for a while. When it's finished, you'll barely notice a difference. Here they are side by side so you can kind of see what effect it has. Time for clouds. Search for the volumetric clouds actor and drop it in. You should see clouds immediately. If you don't, go to cloud material, expanded, enable show engine content and search for simple volumetric cloud. Make sure to choose the instance so you can adjust the parameters without recompiling your shaders constantly. I actually recommend making a copy of this material instance, applying it and editing that. When you do this, make sure to click copy and not move, otherwise you'll crash the engine like I did. <laughs> if you don't make your own copy, any changes you make to the material and the engine content will show up in your other projects. This happened to me. One time I tossed clouds in a project and they were all randomly green from some stuff I did in another project. It was really weird. Here are some things to keep in mind when adding clouds to your project. Most of this is straight from Epic's documentation linked below. If you open up Epic's included simple volumetric clouds material and select the volumetric advanced output node, you will see this value in the details. Multi-scattering approximation octave count controls how accurately the engine simulates the light being scattered by droplets in the cloud. Epic recommends keeping this at 1 for games. The reason I'm bringing this up is because you can still cheat this effect at higher values by using a high multi-scattering contribution value with a low occlusion value. Also in the advanced volumetric output node, there is this parameter for a ray marked volume shadow. Ray margin looks better but has a higher performance cost. If you want to disable this, I recommend making a copy of Epic's cloud material and disabling it in your new copy. Then change the parent of the instance you made earlier to this copy. Bump up your camera speed scaler so you can fly through the clouds. This really makes me want to make an airship game. Add a landscape to provide a frame of reference. I made mine really big to create a sort of vista. Now I'll just play around with the settings. You may notice I tell you to do that a lot in my tutorials. I promise it's not because I'm being lazy. <clears throat> I say that a lot because when it comes to parameters like this, the best way to learn is often to maximize a value, then minimize the value and see what effect it has. It's a lot more intuitive than having someone tell you what it does, and it's way more fun. The only thing to be aware of is that it's not very technical. Everything you do has a performance cost. Usually that'll be noted in the tooltips helpfully left by the developers. Some settings to be aware of in the directional light component are light shaft occlusion and then these ones farther down. They all pretty much do what they say in the name. Expand that section and these values below will allow you to tweak how the cloud shadows look. If you find that the cloud shadows are giving you performance issues, try turning down the cloud shadow map resolution scale. I don't really recommend turning it up higher, but you could if you want for some reason. If you want to see shadows cast on clouds, add a cube and make it really huge. Then in the cube's details, check far shadow. Back in the directional light, go to cascaded shadow maps, expand this little tab at the bottom, and set the far shadow cascade amount to something like two or three. Also max out the distance. Boom, now the cube is casting shadows on the clouds. This is a really cool effect if you want to have stuff peeking up through the clouds. It sells just how massive the object is. Thank you all very much for the support and nice comments in the last couple months. Every day I wake up to more positive comments on my channel and it spurs me to keep uploading. If you have some suggestions on tutorials I can make, be sure to leave them below. I read every comment.